Hierarch, a home building software, just raised $53 million. And the question that I want to ask is, should architecture firms be worried? Now, I know that you may be thinking that, you know, when people talk about tech projects, they talk about how it's going to revolutionize design, how it's going to disrupt the entire industry. But this product actually does start to speak to something that is, I believe, a fundamental shift. Hierarch was very strategic in targeting home builders and delivering houses. This is something that they could corner and really understand the process from A to Z. They have a diagram of here, which is kind of the typical process here, which is disruptive flows between design, purchasing, sales, and construction. They bring all those items together into one, not one platform, it's one platform, but it's, it's two interfaces, both the sales side and the design side. This is what's intriguing about this platform. What is the role of the architect? What is the role of an architecture firm? Now, I understand that, you know, architecture firms are still going to deliver bespoke design services for highly bespoke residential projects, but it is going to take a market share, right, from architecture firms, just as it is today. What's fascinating about this platform, the reason why I'm excited about this platform, and I don't get excited about that many tech projects because I see a lot of AAC tech companies, I evaluate them from A to Z and I look at them critically, but what's uniquely exciting about this project is that they're integrating a workflow in a holistic way from the end to the from the beginning to the end. I can't believe I messed that up. They have basically their design and operations side. Basically rebuilt Revit that is smarter and more intelligent and automates a ton of things. They then have the purchasing side um, and estimating. They have the sales and marketing side, and then they have the construction documents into one holistic system. So let's scroll down to here. So this is that CAD system, a design it, what they call, I guess they call the studio, and we could take a deeper dive into this. What's exciting about this is the showroom. I'm about to buy a house. I can look at this rendering and say, you know what? I really want a two-car garage. The salesperson can swap that out. It's an Ikea-like experience for houses. I don't like that paint finish. Let's swap it out. Realistic render, swap out that color. They have it. This is all integrated with the construction documents, with everything. You know what? Let's flip that house. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't want to drive in from the other side, I guess. Flip that house. You know what? I really want another bedroom. Let's add that as an option. This is an ideal platform for someone buying a house, right? They have customization and they can then have access to their house that they're going to move into, but then it automatically updates the construction documents. So that is amazing. And on top of the, so that's just one, that's like one of the coolest elements about this software. There's some, another thing that's really interesting that's happening here, which it's hard to see through these, this website, but they basically have what you could consider design guidelines on your portfolio scale all the way down to an individual house scale. So what I mean by that is, let's say you have a housing development of like 10 houses or 50 houses. In this software, you could set a design guideline that you're gonna do your eaves like X, Y, and Z, or you're gonna do all your windows with this window manufacturer, for instance. You can set that on a portfolio scale, so like 40 houses, or you can just customize that on the house, on one individual house. So the ability that this software has to work across those scales is really fascinating. So my biggest takeaways with this platform are that they've basically created a Revit-like tool, so like a design tool that's basically like Revit, but a lot better. Created a user-friendly sales interface, IKEA-like experience for customers. They've specifically targeted housing developers covering the full process from A to Z. They've enabled a lot of automation in all their workflows so they can work between everything from the sales side to the design side and back and forth with a lot of ease and full integration. There is still a steep learning curve to using the tool. So not only are they going to need education for people to become experts in the tool, they might even need in-house experts. I don't really know. It's gonna be a similar learning curve to learning Revit, which you should not minimize. That takes time to learn. So I'm interested to see how that sort of plays out. Does Hiar kind of become specialists? They're gonna need some hand-holding for every single customer that they have to a certain extent or for a certain amount of time. 
they have some interesting research initiatives, uh, including using computer vision to take plans and convert those to houses. Now, there's a lot of use cases for this, and I think that's going to have some really unhidden and unexpected beneficial acts, aspects that may not be immediately known right now, but I think farther down the line, this ability to just read a plan and translate that to a model, that's that's super awesome. And then it does have the potential to disrupt traditional residential architecture firms and introduce a new business model. And what I mean by that is, what is the business model of an architecture firm? And the more that I think about this, I think of an architecture firm kind of like a tech company. They use a technology, they deliver a service, they stamp drawings, and they build a building. They also coordinate a bunch of consultants. What happens when that technology gets better and better and better? I don't know. The role of the architect, what happens to the role of the architect? Now we have the client that has more decision power, more accessibility to make decisions about the design, the thing that they're going to inhabit. If you can now all of a sudden give this power for the client to easily make and visualize choices on their project, how is that going to change the design process for architects? I think this is going to change how architects work. And I know that might sound drastic, but I do think that this is a shift in how we think about technology and how architecture firms use technology. The firms that take advantage of new technology are going to win. The ones that don't will stay around, but they will not grow or they will basically retire and the new firms will come up and emerge and use these technologies. I'm interested to see how this how this is going to impact the industry at large. I think what we're going to see is a shift in how we think about architects, similarly to the shift from architects first using Revit, uh, going from CAD to Revit. That completely changed how architects worked and delivered services. We can get more into that subject because I'm really fascinated about that, but let's keep on the topic of hierarch and just get down into the the nitty gritty i want to see how this what this tool actually looks like so i'm going to bring up um, something from their webinar here this is from their webinar i actually did a reaction in real time but then my audio didn't pick up so i ended up not really using it but i still have the recording high level your plans with generative design what we're going to do here today and what i'll say about this is We've been talking about generative design for a long time, and we have Grasshopper scripts, and we have these different tools that do generative design. Autodesk has generative design, but how are any of those projects connecting the workflow from A to Z? This is where they have their unique advantage. This is where this company has their unique advantage, is how they're integrating this workflow from A to Z. So Your let's take a listen in. With generative design. Uh, so we built Hierarch as a generative design system from the ground up, and it's really to serve our mission, to improve the quality and affordability of homes through technology. That's everything that we do here at Hierarch and what our team is focused on. And uh, hopefully that's gonna be really clear to you here today. What you're going to see is technology that we've built to design homes with speed and agility. So as you're seeing in the image here, uh, we have a system in the Hierarch Studio that enables us to represent homes along with all of their options, and then instantly generate the construction documentation, the purchasing and estimating information, and even the sales and marketing experience that's associated with those homes. Uh, we so what's significant about that is all those aspects that he just listened, li listed out. These plans from Signature that we're going to go uh, through today, uh, towards the end of last week, and we set up the very basics of what we call the central data model at Hierarch. Uh, this image represents a bit of what's happening behind the scenes in a central data model. So unlike traditional design tools uh, like AutoCAD or uh, building information modeling systems, uh, Hierarch generates homes from data. And what that means is that you can adjust that data centrally and then update that information across the business. Even See, that's key right there. So a central data model is essentially saying, if I had three Revit files, right? How do I change those three Revit files? I have to go into every single one of those files individually. 
Now I haven't looked into the latest BIM 360, but I do not think you can just update data across three different Revit files. So that is very cool. If it is reflecting uh, multiple plans. Um, and that's a little hard to uh, comprehend until you really see it in action. So that's what we're going to take you through here today. You can make those changes across the entire business. You can make it at a region level, a community level, or of course, in a specific plan type. See, that's super cool. That's super cool. I took a screenshot. Now, those same concepts that we are showing on that previous screen that apply to uh, building characteristics and building systems, uh, we've also developed in the con uh, context of layouts. So uh, if you're familiar with AutoCAD, uh, you understand this technology around blocks and being able to represent uh, content and then deploying it through many different files. At HiArc, we've taken that concept of blocks and we've augmented it and made it generative. Uh, so these images are showing you a bit of what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, we have hundreds of pre-built layouts that we've created at HiArc, and we're going to be deploying some of those across the signature plan to accelerate our timeline. What's exciting about that is that once you have all those uh, elements in place, again, you can change them centrally. And when they get updated, you know, you can update the equivalent of hundreds of plans at once. I'll make myself I'll show you how smaller. And what really makes Hire powerful and what we're going to show is we round trip the production of this house and then take you through all the, the assets that are produced is that we generate deliverables. Uh, what that means is that we have a generative design model. That's what we're going to produce here this in the first sure. 20 or That's 30 minutes cool part. of this uh, presentation. And then we're going to generate construction documents, purchasing and estimating data, brochures, the customer experience, and a whole host of other assets and deliverables that would typically have to be produced manually. And that's really the, the magic behind Hire and what we built here today. Um, without further ado, this kind of stuff. All right, so I'm going to just skip through this. Steps. Sorry, I'm just going to skip through this. So space. I just wanted to we'll show you the that. actual... Um, modeling experience here so you'll notice he's basically so right now he's just tracing right over the plan drawing walls spaces. what's interesting is when he clicks on a, and on a house, what you're seeing and Michael, have like the what you're seeing michael do here is it's much wall. different than other platforms whereas we instead of drawing walls to accomplish a space we're um designing rooms and everything here so yeah everything is room based right so you click on that room, it has all that data in that room. Edge hosted. So as you as you put in a room, you're given um, some edge controls where you can really fine tune. So once you select that room, it just says general here, but you can click down and just say kitchen or whatever. So let's skip forward to, um, yeah. So for instance, here's that part where they make it into a porch. So right now we he's just gonna a select a room. Them, using that as a background to start from. Let's just basically. see this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's just an image here. And uh, I'm nearly complete with uh, subdividing the space into rooms. So it looks like, yeah, now I'm pretty much all the way complete with this. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is take some happens. of these rooms and apply functions to them. Uh, so this first one, this is the cool part. So you select the room the front porch, and then you go up there and you type in front porch and, porch and it literally and becomes there's a front many porch. Things that happen I mean, inside of Pyark already. That is uh, so that crazy. turns that into an exterior that is, room. That is crazy. Let's, um, let's fast forward. My so he can just click us, this. I guess because there are people who are at right, these so. both into garage rooms. So it just turns that in the garage. I it puts a garage. That's, going oh my to, gosh, that's uh, crazy. Select a like garage single door. And garage I'm gonna single door. Here. Okay, where did he do and that? I'm going to apply that there. Uh, so you can see that we now have those garage doors applied. Uh, I will apply a void. Yeah, the interface is not like super. It is what it is. Like, and I think that's okay. Like, it's not like super nice but at the same time like i think someone i can see this and i could see how someone could learn it over time all here now my so garage far. is starting to take shape but i think it's good enough um i'll come into this space and turn this into the living room so it just says living room puts a space into a rear porch 
Also notice like all the windows are already here, which is uh, crazy. All of my columns are being determined, your column placements are being determined by those settings uh, inside of the central wow. data model. We can oh find See, them. you just put dining and it's putting all those assets in there. So you have a more intelligent system. And again, it's putting in the electrical, it's putting in all those, all that information. Of course, at some point it's gonna have to get verified by those disciplines, but just having those initial drawings is super helpful. So I'll just fast forward through here. It basically goes through and what's kind of crazy about this platform and the design studio is it has all this automation, but then you can make things unique. You can customize things. You can kind of like break them out of its generative aspects. And then you'll notice like it immediately becomes construction documents. They immediately make uh, the roofs. The roof system to me seemed a little weird how they were doing roofs. It was not intuitive, but essentially it's a similar process of you're assigning a room and deciding what type of roof it's going to have. Um, and then boom, you already have your full list of construction documents. I mean, they did this live, which is insane. Um, so with literally in like a couple of minutes, they've made, um, construction documents for house. I mean, this is absolutely insane. Then this is the coolest part. Like you have your communities, right? And you have all the plots, what's available, what's been sold. So a customer could essentially select, okay, I want this plot over here. And can I have, you know, this house, they can visualize that on that plot and make decisions. And let's say like something actually can't be done. They already know that up front. Um, so that's that say, this is the sales platform, which is really cool. And so you'll see this function here where it says mirror. Yeah, I can mirror that thing. You can add design options. They went through that, like the, the architect or whoever is making the building, they can put together a series of design options that a salesperson could put together. It says not for construction. So I wish I knew the process after this. I'm sure they need to get stamped. I don't, you know, who knows? that process. Um, but let me know what that process is. Uh, give, give me some light into what they do with these, these drawings afterwards. I imagine that they would then hand it off to a designer. Um, but it might also just depend on, sorry, an architect, but also just might depend on what state they're at, what the sort of, um, different uh, requirements are depending on the state. All right, so that is the tool. Uh, I wanted to just kind of bring through the demo itself so you could actually take a look at what the software actually is like. So I'm curious what you think of this tool and where you think they're gonna go with this $53 million. If you start to see who their investors are, this could give you a little bit of an example of what will come next. And I'm curious, does incorporating manufacturing and purchasing basically advertisements in your platform, is that going to diminish the experience of using this tool or not? I don't know. Uh, similarly, so they have Home Depot. Are they going to have, obviously going to have some integration with, hey, you can buy this at Home Depot. Here are some lights from Home Depot. Go add them to your cart. That is a pretty interesting business model, right? If you all of a sudden are a funnel into a business, same with Simpson Strong Ties. Hey, we're going to specify your strong ties. Here's the information to do that. Um, at some point, you don't even have an option of who you're going to buy from. It's just integrated within the platform, right? So these are some things that I'm thinking about. I'm curious, what are the things that I'm not thinking about? What am I missing here? And what are they going to do next? What is the next iteration of HiArc? Are they going to find ways to just improve this exact market segment? Imagine without this funding, like let's say a HiArc 2.0 that starts to attack a different market segment, right? That could be really interesting. Uh, it would take a lot more work, which is why they were smart to first attack something that was maybe a little bit more tangible. Uh, but I'm really curious like where, where this goes from here. So let me know what your thoughts are. I'm curious what you think of this tool. Are you as excited about it as I am, or am I just uh, overhyping this? Let me know in the comments. See you later.